Happy Monday, motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. Like the fifth time I've had to start recording this thing. What's going on, everyone? You are back with the head adulting guy, adulting Donnie, on adulting with Donnie, live uh, on Facebook, where probably no one will watch, which is fine. It's a weird thing, though, like to uh, to have seen that not many people tuned in for like an episode a few weeks ago because it wasn't actually live. And, uh, and, and then, but when I go live, it doesn't seem like there's many people. I wonder if my little formula there works where, um, where like I tried, uh, you know, thinking, you know, maybe if somebody sees the show and just sees a couple minutes of the show, then, uh, that will coax them to want to see more. So anyways, happy Monday, June 14th, about halfway through. 2021, I hope everyone's year has been good. Fucking masks are finally going away, man. It is so nice to walk into stores and see the amount of people that are not wearing masks anymore. All the people who were so hardcore about masks for so long, and it's all going away. It's a beautiful thing to see. I don't mind it at all. Uh, I noticed about a month ago, probably, the signs at my local market basket, which is my grocery store here. Um, the, the little directional signs on the floor, those things came off before the mass signs went down. And then, uh, you know, my, my city that, uh, that I deliver mail in Portsmouth, um, they, they decided to not renew their, their mask mandate. And, uh, I think it was last week. It was like effective immediately. There was no more mask mandate for the city of Portsmouth. So, um, here's the thing. They never ne- necessarily needed a mask mandate. You know, the state didn't have to say, you know, the state could have said what the state could have and probably should have said was, look, businesses, if you want to, then that's you, that's your thing. You, you know, a private business can do that, can say, um, you know, we, we don't, you know, you know, no mask, no service or whatever. Um, you know, I think that everyone, a lot of people's problem with it was the fact that the state and the city governments were getting involved in that, which uh, seemed a little overreaching, if you will. So, but it's cool to see them mostly going away. I delivered downtown yesterday. I worked on a Sunday yesterday, man. I worked a Sunday for the first time in like a year and a half, maybe t- maybe almost two years. I worked on a Sunday, um, mostly because I want that money. I you know. I, I needed to work that extra day so that I can pay for my next flight because uh, those are not cheap, those fucking flights. So uh, I'll do, uh, I I worked yesterday and did the math on just how much money I made yesterday and it should, uh, it should almost pay for a flight. So, so that's good. But yeah, yesterday I worked and I had to deliver packages in downtown Portsmouth. It's the first time I've been down there. Hold on a second. (coughs) Sorry, I missed my mute there for a second on my cough. Um, So, yeah, I delivered downtown for the first time in uh, in a couple months, two or three months now. I haven't delivered down there since, uh, since like, the end of March, maybe even, like, early March. And, um, I gotta say, I don't, I don't don't really miss it. Uh, I know that there might be some people downtown that listen to this show uh, and I appreciate that. And I do miss some of the people that I deliver to down there, but, uh, I don't miss the fucking, I don't miss the mask thing down there. That really burned me the fuck out, uh, having to, you know, go into stores and hear people be like, why isn't he wearing a mask? And, you know, more on more than one occasion, not only did businesses call my post office to complain that I wasn't wearing a mask, on more than one occasion, they called the police department to say the mailman downtown isn't wearing a mask. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't really miss it. You know, I deliver there on, I delivered there on Sunday and, uh, luckily I only had to go in and out of a couple of businesses, but just walking around down there, I was like, yeah, I don't actually miss this that much. Not nearly as much as I thought I would. Give me the ghetto. Give me, give me uh, Gosling Meadows any day. I'll take, uh, I'll take that area way over doing, uh, doing the, the ritzy downtown people. So, 
that's been uh that that's been me. That's been uh, uh I don't even remember where the fuck I was going. I worked on a Sunday. I know that much. And the masks are gone. So and I don't miss downtown. So anyways. Should I invest in crypto? I keep I have like two friends on Facebook who are constantly talking about their um Oh, my uncle Bobby uh, checking in on the comments said, "Yes, many of your customers miss you." Yeah, he did. Uh, I so, so over the weekend before I get into the whole crypto thing. Um, over the weekend, uh, we had so I told you guys that last weekend, um, my nephew graduated eighth grade, and then we had like a little party at Dave and Buster's. I think I re- yeah I recorded the show right before going to Dave and Buster's. And it was a good time. It was it was fun. I hung out there for probably about an hour and change, like an hour and a half maybe, and uh, played a played a couple of games of um, air hockey with my sister. And I played one game with my sister and then one game with my nephew, and uh, and it was fun. Had a couple of drinks. Caught up with um, my ex brother in law's brother because uh, he he work he works in Manchester and uh, I haven't seen him in a few years probably probably six or seven years or more I haven't seen him so it was cool to catch up with him for a little bit and uh, shoot the shit with him and then uh, and then left there to go catch up with Ro in Newmarket to have a beer with her and her friends um, after their softball game. So, but anyway, so that was like the graduation day and kind of like post-graduation celebration type of thing. And then uh, this past weekend, we had like a graduation party here at my father's house. And uh, and it was cool. I mean, my father has a pool, so it was like a pool party type of deal. Kids running around and stuff and um, had some fun doing that. And my Uncle Bobby was here. He got to finally meet Rochelle. And, uh, as well as the rest of my family got to finally meet her and she met them and, and made the impression that I thought she would. And, uh, but talking to my uncle, he was telling me that, cause he, he does, uh, some business downtown Portsmouth. So he runs into some people that I know and, and, you know, he knows that they know me. And, uh, and so that, you know, he was telling me that talking to some of them, they, uh, they miss me downtown as well. Um, so, I don't know though. I, you know, I don't know if I'll ever end up back down there. Uh, I liked the. Uh, I don't know. There were parts of it that I liked, but this this new route that I'm on, just doing businesses mostly all day, and then uh, doing this one tiny little neighborhood that's like 250 people, 300 people, something like that. Um, I like that a lot. So, I have no idea what's going to go on there. Anyways, should I invest in crypto? Uh, I have this I have like a handful of friends on Facebook who will constantly be posting like you know their earnings I guess you know or 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 how their stock is going up in whatever crypto there's too many cryptos first of all there's like you know I have a I have a dollar an American dollar and then there's a Canadian dollar and then there's like Iraqi dinar and European pounds and and there's all these different denominations, but and then like you get into Bitcoin, and you know Bitcoin was just like one sort of Bitcoin when it started, and now there's like all these different ones. I I can't even begin to come up with an example of some of the other ones because some of them have really stupid fucking names, like doorknob or something like that. Um, so. But my friends keep posting these, like, you know, I invested, you know, $400, and now I have, you know, $1,200. But it's like $1,200 in Bitcoin. We're going to use Bitcoin as the example. Since I don't know the other the other types of currency, the other types of electronic coin. I remember listening to a podcast, uh, like a Joe Rogan podcast, way back in, I don't know, January 2014 or 15. And he had this crypto guy on who was very, very knowledgeable in the topic. Like he sat there for three hours talking about Bitcoin. And he said that at the time, you know, like this is back then. And at that time, he was saying that one single Bitcoin was valued around, what do you say? It was like $800 for one Bitcoin. And then I remember a couple of years ago, 
Bitcoin was like $16,000 for one Bitcoin. And I was pissed because I didn't get into it at that time, right? Like I was like, ah, fuck, you know, if I'd have bought one, then it, you know, it went up so much in value that now I'd be worth $16,000 or whatever. And, uh, but then someone explained it to me, like, it's almost like having a fucking trading card. Like if I have a signed Michael Jordan card, right? That is probably, you know, let's just throw out a number. Let's just say it's worth $10,000, right? But you still have to find someone who's willing to give you $10,000 for that. And really, at this point, the only people that are going to give you, you know, $16,000 for a single, single Bitcoin or whatever it's valued at today, the only people that are going to give you that are people who are expecting that price to go up. Nobody's going to give you that, that uh, you know, nobody's going to give you, you know, $16,000 knowing that the value is going down. So, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't, I don't know. I, my pro, my one of my biggest problems with it is that it's not a physical thing. It's not something that I can hold in my hand. You know, it's not something that I that I actually can walk to the store with and go to the clerk and say I want to pay with my Bitcoin and hand him something. Like that's the biggest holdup right now for anything crypto. I think. Um, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, maybe I'll be wrong. I, I'm sure I'll, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be wrong. I know that on this podcast that this guy on Joe Rogan was talking, he was saying, and, and he lived in California, so they're, you know, fairly progressive with stupid things like that. Um, he was saying that, you know, he pays for everything he can in Bitcoin. He pays, you know, he makes his car, he, he like negotiated with all the things that he needs to pay. Uh, the, the last thing that he was working on with his landlord for rent and his landlord was starting to accept Bitcoin then for rent. Uh, but, like, he negotiated with his bank to be able to make his car payments in Bitcoin. And then there's all this, like, very, you know, cryptic history behind it of nobody knows who invented it. It could have been one guy. It could have been a group of people. Um, you know, nobody really knows where it came from. It's probably the Matrix fucking with us, uh, you know creating the next big thing um i don't know i don't know enough about it and i I, you know i'm happy with just my my regular dollars my regular handful fistful of dollars um and uh and coins in my pocket and being able to look at my bank account and be like yep i have that much money right there so i don't know um i had like things on my in my uh in my notes but they're from like two or three weeks ago so some of them are are like i'm like oh what the fuck was i talking about and you know what i'm barely even drinking these days uh there have been like a couple nights where ro and i have woken up the next morning and been like i think i got a little drunk last night but uh but um but yeah i I mean I've, i've been dialing back my drinking a lot and uh you know i haven't had bourbon in like three months like well i shouldn't say three months i haven't bought bourbon since the end of february that's the last time that i bought a bottle of bourbon and i finished that bottle uh and to be fair i bought like four bottles all at once and uh i bought four bottles all at once and they uh i finished them like within four weeks right because i was drinking way too much bourbon Right, because that's what I was doing. I was just drinking too much bourbon, and I so I finished them in like four weeks, and but I haven't bought another bottle since then, and I think I've only had like three glasses of bourbon since. I had one when me and Jason and Stan did the cigar bar episode. I had one when Ro and I went to that wedding, and I think I had one more somewhere in that in that time frame. I just don't remember when. But, uh, yeah, I just don't, yeah, I, uh, I'm glad I was able to, you know, take that down because it, firstly, it's so expensive to drink bourbon the way that I was, you know, $50 for a bottle and the bottle doesn't even last a week and, and just, you know, and then the way that I was drinking it was I was drinking it every night. So it's not even like I was drinking it, you know, it's not even like I was drinking the bottle over the course of two nights and then being like, well, that's it until my next paycheck. Like I was just burning through money on alcohol. 
like way back in September, me and Ro, I think I've talked about this before, but I don't care. It's my show. I'll do what I want. Um, way back in September, me and Ro were talking about sober October and, uh, you know, doing the math on what we each spend on alcohol. And she was like, well, I probably go through like four 30 packs of Coors Light a month. Might've even been less. It might've been like three. Um, but you know, let's use four for good measure. And she was like, okay, that's 80 bucks. How much do you spend on alcohol a month? And I'm like, okay, let's see here. Uh, a 12 pack of Sam Adams is like $15. And I probably buy three of those a week, at least three of those a week. So that's $45 right off the bat. So that's 180 bucks. And then, uh, and then I was like, and then bourbon is 50, um, 50, uh, I gotta, hold on, I gotta fucking text Ro here real quick, uh, I, let's see here, no, th- she's asking me if I'm hungry, no thank you, I got you a salad, I hope she likes the salad, um, I'm doing, I didn't tell her that I was doing my podcast, so, uh, right now, there we go, some nice dead air for everyone to enjoy, um, shit, oh yeah, so, so then you add in bourbon, $50 a bottle, and I'm going through like two or three bottles of that a week, even if you go on the low end of that, that's $400 by itself, so that sounds, that sounds right, like my math sounds right on that, I think that I said like $480, and she was like, oh my god, for like, she couldn't fucking believe how much I was spending on alcohol a month. And uh, so, but I remember like part of like flying in the first place, I had said, you know, maybe I'll enjoy flying so much that it will make me want to, you know, drink bourbon less to spend less money on that. And uh, and then I can use that money for flying. And uh, the thing is, is that I haven't really been great about that part. Like that money is apparently going somewhere else. I'm not even sure where probably like out to dinner or something like that. Um, or, 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 or who knows? I'm not even sure where that, where that other money is going now. But, uh, I know that flying is insanely expensive. Flying is less expensive than drinking bourbon. Um, that's, that's, that's a good way to put it actually. Yeah. Flying is less expensive than, than buying bourbon for me. So, um, yeah, but I haven't had, I've had at least two glasses, I think maybe three, no more than three in the last three months. So I definitely don't mind being being gone from that. That shit, I mean, the problem is that it's so good. But the other problem is waking up in the morning and being like, ugh, why did I do that? Why did I, I, I can't even begin to count the amount of mornings. That I would wake up on almost a daily basis and be like, I gotta fucking stop drinking. I gotta stop drinking as much as I do when I'm, you know, having bourbon and chasing it with beer all night long. And, uh, you know, I, I would talk to my counselor and be like, and justify it and be like, well, I'm not missing work. You know, I'm not, I'm not beating my girlfriend or anything like that. So, so I'm fine. You know, uh, there's no problem here. And, uh, that, that is odd though. Like I did wake up. I probably, I mean, I guess I woke up better because I felt like shit. That's probably why I like, and by wake up better, I mean like, get up and get out of bed and get going for the day. Now I'm just like, these days I'm like, ugh, I, just, I don't want to get out of bed. I just want to stay right here next to my mate and uh, and not get out of bed all day long. Although I did get up this morning. I got up this morning and went to the gym for the first time in a long time. Like, I haven't been to a Planet because I go to Planet Fitness because A, it's cheap, and B, they're fucking everywhere. Um... There's like 2,900 Planet Fitness locations in America. So I, I just couldn't get into the waking up and going for a run thing. Like I, I was trying, I wanted to pretty badly. I tried in April and I just, ugh, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get up and get motivated to do it. Um, so I decided to, I told Ro last week, like last week we're sitting there and I was, uh, and I, and I wanted to know the mask policy of Planet Fitness before I went and did it, right? So so it's like almost 11 o'clock. And we have a couple mate rules that we've gone over on the show. 
Uh, firstly, like anytime that things start to get a little bit, if, if, and these, these things don't happen often, like, and by not often, I mean, at this point, it's like once maybe every two months or so, there's something that pops up like this. So like when something starts, one of our mate rules, you know, once things start to get a little tense, like we're about to start an argument of some sort, uh, firstly is alcohol involved. Okay. We, we should stop right here. Let's, let's table this for tomorrow when there's no alcohol involved. And then, uh, and then the other one is what time is it? You know, is it after 11, you know, we have a cutoff of 11 o'clock. If it's after 11 o'clock again, let's, let's table this. Let's not do this tonight. We'll table this for another night. Sometimes we're pretty good about, about following these rules. And then sometimes we're not, uh, sometimes like one of us has to have the realization of what's happening, which is probably like the hardest part is to have the realization of what's happening and then bring it up and be like, you know, like there have been like one or two where I've had to be like, what time is it? Okay, it's after 11. You know, let's not do this. And uh, that's probably the hardest part is to realize what time it is. Because really you're just thinking about the argument at that point. But anyway, so so the other night I want to know what the mask situation is at Planet Fitness, right, in Portsmouth. So my go-to, uh, her go-to is Google. 100% all the time, Google. Uh, my go-to is not Google. My go-to is Facebook, for, uh, and not even just Facebook in general, just Facebook groups. I find, like, I, I find that I get more correct, uh, not even more correct, but I'll get like more specific, more direct answers out of Google, or not, I'm sorry, out of uh, Facebook groups. You get to hear from people that are actually doing whatever. Um, you know, if I wanted to know you know, what, what, uh, you know, what do you think is the best movie of 2019? Um, you know, I'll get, uh, you know, I'll post that in the cinephiles group that I'm in. Um, if I'm like, Hey, I went for a run today. And when I finished my shin really hurt, like what can I do to make my shins not hurt? I can ask that in the running group that I'm in and get a bunch of answers there. If I ask Google a question, I'm going to get articles that I have to read through entire articles. I'm going to get, you know, professional opinions. And with this specific question, what's the mass policy at Planet Fitness right now? I'm going to get the corporate answer. I already know I'm going to get the corporate answer. The corporate answer is going to be, you know, we request that you wear a mask or something like that. You know, Planet Fitness is dedicated to your safety. We, you know, we won't, we, you know, we disinfect on a daily basis, all this bullshit. And it's at the end of it, it's going to be like, you know, if it doesn't specifically say, uh, masks are mandatory, it's probably going to say, uh, you know, we request that you wear a mask. So, so I don't want the corporate answer. I want to hear from people that are going. So like this starts off and we start kind of like, it starts to get a little heated, just barely like, and I mean like just a little simmer, just a little tiny simmer on the top there of, of her being, of her saying like, why are you, you know, why, why don't you just Google it? And me saying, well, because I don't want to Google it. I want to ask a group. And we went back and forth a little bit. And I was like, I want to hear from the people. That's what I want. I want to hear from the people. And, um, and it was only a few moments later that we're like over this whole thing and it's all done. But she got a great kick out of me saying, I want to hear from the people. She was, she was laughing and saying that, you know, I sounded like an Englishman or, or Bane or something like that, uh, you know, yelling, I want to hear from the people um, about what's the mass situation at Planet Fitness. So, but anyway, so I think I, I think I asked that question on like Friday night and, um, and I didn't really get any good answers. Like one guy commented and said, because I, I posted it in a Portsmouth Facebook group and uh, one guy commented and said, um, that he want that he was in for comments because he wanted to know the answer too, and then another guy commented and all he said was "gone," one word "gone." And I replied back with some question marks and never heard back from him ever again. Uh, I don't know what "gone" meant. I'm not sure if he meant that masks were gone, or if he meant that that Planet Fitness specifically was gone. Uh, but that Planet Fitness is not gone, so I'm not sure why why he put that. So, but whatever. So I uh, so instead, so I wait. So let's see here. I posted it on Friday night. I got no answers on Saturday. So yesterday, Sunday, 
I called the that specific Planet Fitness and said, "Hey, what's your mask policy?" And they said, uh, "You know, we we uh, we request that they be worn, but they're not mandatory." Um, so I was like, "Hey, that's all I needed to hear. They're not mandatory. Got it." So I went in there yesterday while I was working, and uh, and signed up. You know, it takes five minutes to sign up. No big deal. Um, so I signed up and, uh, and now I can run inside. Cause that's like, that's, that was what shut me down from running a few years ago was the summer here was just, it was, uh, trying to get up and run. Like I walked out the door one morning and it was just so humid and gross outside. It's like five 30 in the morning and like sun is blaring down and it's like 90% humidity. So I was like, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not running today. And then I basically just never did again. Like I, I took the summer off and then I, ne- I have tried a few times to get back into it and I just couldn't. And, uh, you know, unlike a lot of people, I, I, well, I don't know if a lot of people is the right way to put that, but, um, I don't, uh, some people, I don't know. Most people, I think that most people don't like running, um, but I could be wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I know that when I was in the military, I fucking hated it. I fucking hated running. I hated run days. We ran on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I hated every single one of them. Um, I hated PT tests just because of the run. I pretty much had no problems with the with the push-ups and the sit-ups, but the runs always fucking... Uh, I failed them so many fucking times. I failed runs more than I failed, or more than I passed them. Um... So, and then like basic training, I think that I didn't pass a run until my, I think it was like my second to last PT test or maybe even my third to last PT test. But those first, you know, because we did a PT test every three weeks, I think in basic training and, um, and I failed all of them. Uh, my run time was I had to do two miles in 15 minutes and 54 seconds and my run, my first run that I passed, I crossed the finish line at 15 minutes and 54 seconds exactly. And uh, and I remember, like, you had to, like, while you're running, you have to call, because there's, like, seven drill sergeants there all recording down times for who they're assigned to, right? So um, my drill sergeant that I was assigned to was Drill Sergeant Craig, and I had to shout out his name, then shout out my name and the number on my shirt. So it was like Gates 57, I think. And uh, and I'm running, and I can hear them counting down. And it's like, it's like 15, 15, 45, 15, 46, 15, 47. And I know that I'm going to cross that finish line at the, at the exact mark. And I'm going to have to be, you know, yelling out this drill sergeant's name at that time. So, <sighs> but I was psyched when I fucking came across. And then, you know, later that night, they're reading out the times for everyone who uh who passed and they were like gates 1554 you just barely made it huh i was like yeah yeah but i passed you know what fuck you i'm not here for points um i'm here to pass uh that's what i did so although with flying that's like the first thing that i've ever flying is maybe the first thing ever where i'm like i don't need i don't want to just pass like even the police academy i was like i just want to pass i didn't want to get a 70 because that's the minimum that was the minimum on, on your testing for the police academy was 70. I didn't want to get a 70, um, but I would I was happy with an 80. Uh, with flying, you need an 80. Your, your, that's the minimum is an 80% on your final test. And uh, I don't want an 80. I want 100. I want to get 100% go on, uh, on all of my flying stuff. So I'm flying again a little over a week from now. I'll fly, and I think that... Um, I think that uh, that'll be. I think that that'll be my second to last flight with an instructor. I actually almost went in today and scheduled another flight beyond that one. But here's the thing: so next week I'm gonna fly with Jack, who I've been flying with since October. I'm gonna fly with him, and uh, oh, and then that's another place where I went into the other day to schedule my next flight. And they got all the plastic barriers down at the fucking counter they got that you know no one's wearing a mask in there it's a beautiful sight I, I really love it i'm psyched 
Um, I'm so happy to see it all go away, especially when six months ago they were like, this shit's never going away. It's gonna, this is the new normal. You know, not even six months ago, like eight, nine months ago. This is the new normal. This is how it's going to always be forever. Fuck you in your fucking face. I'm going to get to that actually. But, um, but yeah, so I, 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 I scheduled a flight for next week and, um, and, uh, the thing is, is that next week I'm going to fly with Jack and we're just going to do landings. That's it. We're just going to practice landings the whole time. Um, and then hopefully the week after I'll be able to schedule a lesson where I'm going to go there and I'm going to fly with a different instructor. This is my understanding of how it works. I'm going to fly with a different instructor and that other instructor is going to grade me on how I do on like takeoff and landing and maybe a couple like turns and whatever else, right? So, um, you know, communications with the tower, all that bullshit. So he'll grade me on that stuff and then we'll land and he'll get out of the plane and then I will go back out in the plane by myself, which will be quite the experience, I think. I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about it for the last month, you know, like what that will be like to be in an airplane 1,100 feet off the ground by myself, knowing that I have to put this thing back on the ground by myself. So we'll see what happens uh, with with my flying next week. You know, hopefully next week me and Jack will do, you know, I don't know, seven, eight, nine touch-and-go landings, and uh, and he'll be like, you're good. You, you're, you're ready to go for your solo test. And, um, you know, hopefully I don't crash the fucking airplane. Um, so... That's where that's at. Let me do some advertising real quick. Pull up that old Adam and Eve. Uh, my my mate is on her way here. I have no idea if she'll get here and I'll still be doing this or if I'll be wrapped up and, and you know, nothing's going on. Who knows? Um, all right, remove that. There we go. Let's go home. Oh, it's Pride Month. Don't forget that. It's Pride Month. So Adam and Eve has a cool little rainbow thing on there. I don't know how cool that is. You know, the gay community just took refracted light as their color. Um, I just saw some. There it is. Uh, For your pleasure, five sex toys every man should try. That is on the that is on the home page of um, of Adam Eve right now. Uh, masturbators, fleshlights. I just talked about those a couple weeks ago. Penis rings, uh, prostate toys. Um, I'm not really into the prostate toy thing. Uh, you know, I don't know what's up with that. I don't know. Uh, and then there, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I guess there maybe there's some men that are just designed for that to be like natural, or maybe it's a, or maybe it's a practice thing. Maybe it's a practice makes perfect type of thing. Uh, but I just can't. Um, you know. I don't know. It just doesn't seem appealing to me. Uh, penis pumps. I don't know that I would call that a sex toy, a penis pump. Um, that's more of a, uh, a utensil to make your dick bigger. Um, but I just talked about those a couple weeks ago that, you know, I, I didn't even think they were a real thing until I, you know, until I started seeing them. I do think that there's probably quite a few porn, you know, male male adult entertainers if you will that are out there using penis pumps which is fine which is fine nobody i don't you know nobody watches porn wanting that to be their reality um you know you want to live in a in a fantasy world uh penis sleeves and extensions i've never used either of these things um but you know i may or may not have ordered something from adam and eve that came with one of these uh penis sleeves um and, and if it so did, I still have not used it, but, uh, it seems like an interesting thing. It's like a, it's like a thing you put over your dick and it's like all, you know, ribbed along the edges and stuff. So I don't know. Um, you know, if I did ever get one of those, then, uh, maybe I would be willing to try it one of these nights when I'm feeling crazy. Um, I feel like that would cut off some circulation though, and maybe make it harder to get off. Um, but uh, beyond that, I also wanted to look at uh, some, where's the, uh, where's my uh, pills and supplements? I wondered, because I keep seeing these things on like Pornhub that are like uh, Semen Max is what it's called. I don't know if that is a real thing. Like, I don't know if you can actually take a pill to increase 
the size of your load. And if you're not trying to get someone pregnant, you know, what exactly is the point of doing that anyways? Um, I think a KY duration male desensitizer spray, uh, max command performance gel, uh, power erect male enhancement cream, Mojo prostate stimulating gel, Mojo natural penis stimulation gel. So anyways, any of these items on, uh, on the lovely adameve.com, you can go there, use offer code adulting, get 50% off any one item plus free shipping, plus the romance kit comes with six DVDs of gift for her or gift for him and something special for both of you. Um, quite the value on that entire package. When you use offer code adulting at checkout, go to adameve.com, use offer code adulting. And then, uh, and then we have the fabulous Manscaped.com. Support for Adulting with Donnie is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and full and free worldwide shipping with the code adulting at manscaped.com. They have an award-winning website and, uh, and great customer service, award-winning customer service. Uh, imagine sh- shaving with a sleek, well-designed and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time the most awesome time in the bathroom. Uh, I'm one of the first to- people to try the new 4.0 and I'm blown away. Uh, I know that's in the copy, and obviously when I'm reading it, it just sounds like I'm fucking reading off the copy. But I do actually have um, the 4.0 because they sent it to me, and I have actually used it, and I do actually like it. Um, Manscaped engineered... If it's not in here, then I'll talk about it, but I think it's in here. Uh, Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality in an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation uh, trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I now feel confident shaving my boys. Uh, This upgraded trimmer includes a multifunction on off switch that can engage travel lock. It also gives you the ability to turn on the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Uh, and that's what I was going to talk about was that light, that fucking spotlight. It's genius to put on there because you're dealing with like kind of a, a dark and shady area. So that putting that spotlight on there is just, mwah, that is a beautiful idea. The lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard links with sizes one through four. Did I mention wireless charging? The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic. <laughs> The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help battery length last longer. Men, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, you've been doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. It's time to get your own ball and hair body, uh, bleh, ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice smooth boys. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ADULTING at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code ADULTING at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use offer code ADULTING. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Not bad. Not bad. Crushed it with those fucking reads. Um... I was about to go, oh, that's what I was about to say. So I asked this question on Facebook, uh, not on the, I probably should have also asked the Adulting with Donnie page, uh, but feel free to comment your opinion in the uh, in the comments on the video, or you can email the show, um, adultingdonniepod at gmail.com. Um, I asked this question last night, I think it was, Um I said, serious question, not even being a dick. Did you trust the CDC before? Do you trust them now? If not, will you ever trust them again? Now, I got a pretty resounding no from pretty much everyone. Um, You know, a lot of people, me and Ro seem to be on the same page. Uh, My opinion was that I never really thought about them much. 
Um, David, my friend David, too, same thing. Um, I never really thought much about the CDC. I knew that they were a government agency, and I knew that they, you know, oversaw, excuse me, I know that they oversaw, like, disease, obviously. They're the Center for Disease Control. I know that they, they you know, they, they looked out for viruses. I think that there's probably a lot of really good scientists working over there. Um, but I got a lot, you know, I never really gave them any thought, uh, as for the second question, uh, do we trust them now? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any way to trust them right now. Um, the only thing that they care about is COVID. That's the only thing that they talk about. And, um, and you know, everything seems to have been blown so far out of proportion. There's no way for me to trust them right now. And, uh, and then my last question, if not, will you ever trust them again? It's highly unlikely. Um, you know, I can't imagine unless, unless the, you know, and, and this is one of those things where it's not like you can rebuild that trust because to rebuild that trust is going to mean losing a lot of lives. You know, this, there's something would have to happen like for like per se the, you know, a new disease comes, let's just call it the fucking Canadian flu. We'll call it the Canadian flu comes and wipes out fucking half of America. Just this thing just rolls right from, from north to south and and wipes out half our country. And the whole time the CDC is saying, you have to, you have to take this seriously. You have, to, you have to get vaccinated. You really, really have to. And people are just dropping like flies, like that movie Contagion. Like people are just fucking dying overnight, you know. And that's the type of thing that you'd have to look at and be like, okay, maybe the next time CDC talks I should listen. That's that type of thing. So, you know, if nothing like that happens, then it's highly unlikely that I'm ever going to listen to them again. Uh, not that I listened to them in the first place. I had a feeling right from the beginning that this whole thing was blown out of proportion. My problem is that the CDC is, I think, I, you know, my personal opinion is that I would equate it to law enforcement. I think you have 95%, if not 99%, really good people who are there to do their job. Like I just said, CDC probably has... A lot of really, really great scientists working there um, who, you know, grew up just wanting to study microbiology or something and, and, you know, study viruses. And, like, that's all they wanted to do their whole lives was just, you know, work in medicine or something like that. You probably have a ton of people like that. But, like, also, like I just said, it's a government agency at the end of the day. It's still a government agency. And that government agency is going to have people who are saying, you know, I, you know, this is, you know, this is what we want out of this. This is what we want you to tell us. And there may, you know, even Dr. Fauci, I haven't read his stupid emails. Uh, not that I care. And, on, and in fact, I haven't looked into it much, but it wouldn't surprise me if basically like nobody fucking read his emails. Like one person probably read his emails. One fucking stupid Fox correspondent probably read his emails and then followed that up, followed up reading those with just being like, uh, you know, I, I, I would, what the fuck was I going to say? Followed those by saying, by saying, oh, it's, it's right here in the emails. I read the emails and, and everything he said is a lie. It's all lies. And he wanted everyone, he wanted to shut down the country. And, uh, you know, he's a big fat liar, liar, pants on fire. And, uh, and then everyone just took it for, you know, everyone just took that at face value was just like, uh, well, I don't need to read those emails because somebody else did. I tried Googling it. Does, does the Fauci emails actually reveal a conspiracy of any sort? And I couldn't find much, you know, but I also like, I try not to get too conspiratorial, but you know, this, uh, I, I, but at the same time, I do believe that Google is very good at burying, um, you know, what you're looking for in, you know, page 900 of their, you know, you know, 1 million results. So I don't know. I don't know what they revealed, if they revealed anything, but I do think that Again, CDC probably has a lot of really great people working for them, and then you know, but they are a government agency who is going to have to answer to the government at the end of the day. Uh, you know, that's probably where most, if not all, of their funding is coming from. So, if the government says we need you to, we need to spin this this way, then that's the way they're going to spin it. Um, 
you know, I think it, I think it was a bad move because I don't think anyone trusts the CDC anymore. Nobody fucking wants to listen to them. You know, when, when all this bullshit first started, there were a lot of people who were like the CDC, do you, the C, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? It's the CDC that is saying we need to wear masks. We need to social distance. It's the CDC saying that they wouldn't fuck around. And, um, and instead we learned that, you know, we all survived, you know, for the most part, everyone survived. I, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but because like Roe has 5,000 Facebook friends, there's a pretty good chance that at least one or two died of COVID. But I also wonder like how many of them had, um, underlying conditions of some sort, right? So like, did you really die of COVID or did you die of cancer? And they said, well, he had COVID too. And we're going to count that as a COVID death. Um, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Me personally, I don't, as far as I know, I, no one that I know in the past year and a half died from COVID. No one. So, um, so yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was my, my CDC question the other night. Moving on as I wrap up here, cause Ro should be pulling in any minute now. Um, and I, and I, and I want to, you know, finish this so that I can spend time with my mate. Um, I was, I was like, so, so me and Ro, we were, we watched Superstore a few months ago, right? We started watching Superstore in like, I don't know, October or something like that. I'm going to fucking murder that dog. I'm going to fucking kill that dog. I'm going to kill it so much. Um, cause it just barks at nothing. It's just up there right now, barking at nobody, nothing. There's nothing to bark at. There's no reason for it to be barking. It's just, it just likes barking. But to be honest, that dog is better than the fucking great Dane that she had. Because if that thing was barking right now, I wouldn't be able to talk because that thing would be a floor away from me and about 50 feet away from me and barking and it'd be barking over me. I wouldn't be able to do this at all. So instead of, you know, the thunderous roar of that Great Dane, you get the little yips of this Cocker Spaniel. Um, so anyways, we watch Superstore and then that ends. And I was, you know, thinking of like a new, a new, uh, show we could watch. And then I heard of like, I, I, I Googled Kevin James to see what he's up to. And I found that he did a show on Netflix that came out a few months ago called the crew. And it's like about a NASCAR crew. He's like the crew chief of the crew. And, uh, and it's supposed to be like a comedy show. And it sounds pretty awesome. The idea of it sounds awesome. My problem is, is that I watched the trailer for it. And it has a laugh track. If it doesn't have a laugh track, it has a live audience. But at the very least, it probably has a laugh track. And laugh tracks these days bother me. They, I don't like a laugh track. Like, just say the funny thing and let me laugh. I don't need the cue. I don't need to be cued in to laugh, right? Like, they're bringing back fucking friends. I don't know why they're bringing back friends. It was a great show in the 90s. Um... But why are we redoing the same show? Is it because none of those people fucking went anywhere after that ended? Like, Ross played someone, played like, I don't know, O.J. Simpson's lawyer or something in, in some O.J. T- o. J. Simpson TV show on FX. Uh, let's see here. Um, the guy that played Chandler, he hasn't done anything with his time since leaving. Uh, he did play He did play a character in Fallout New Vegas, which I thought was cool. Um, he, he played the voice in Fallout New Vegas of, of someone, which I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, then you have, let's see here, Phoebe. She hasn't done shit since Friends ended. Uh, Jennifer Aniston has, has killed it. Actually, I think that that might be the only difference in all of the universes. There's really only six universes, and it's who goes on to become the big star after Friends ends. Right, so in this universe, we were able to get Jennifer Aniston. In the other universe, we get Courtney Cox. In the other universe, we get you know whoever the guy. What's the guy? Matthew, Matthew Shepard is no, that can't be right. I don't know. Maybe it is. I think it's Matthew something though, the guy that played Joey. But none of those people have gone on to do fucking anything. Like the guy that played Joey, I think that they didn't they do like a Friends spinoff TV show called Joey, and it's like he goes home to LA or something and you know lives with his sister or something something crazy and stupid and it lasted for I don't know half a season maybe so 
I don't see a point in bringing that show back. It, it seems un- completely unnecessary to bring back Friends and and Full House too. Why do we bring that? Like the the I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the last ten, maybe fifteen years. But originality is crucified. It's one of the reasons that I don't even like the uh, that I don't like like the Golden Globes or the you know the the Oscars or anything like that. Like all those movie or all those all those award shows are really just directors and producers and really actors just patting themselves on the back for saying that they did a good job in or on a movie. Like it like Avengers Endgame, never going to win an Oscar. Why? Why wouldn't it win the Oscar? It's the number 1 movie in history. It's the mo- it's got the highest grossing money in history. Everyone fucking wanted to see it. So how does it not end up in in you know getting an Oscar? Um you know, instead you get some stupid fucking movie like, you know, I don't know, Master and Commander or something like that. And, and, and yeah, I'm guilty of saying stupid movie. But, you know, like, nobody wants to see these movies. Nobody wants to, like, the Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious 9 is coming out in, like, a week and a half. And I have no doubt that it is going to be fucking stupid. I have no doubt that it is going to be the dumbest in the entire series. You know, Fast and Furious 8 was bad enough, and Hobbs and Shaw was pretty bad by itself. But Fast and Furious 9 is hands down going to be the dumbest movie that comes out in the entire series just based on watch, watching the trailers. That said, it's going to be the highest grossing film of 2021. for Without a doubt, it's going to destroy Black Widow for sure, and, uh, and it is going to just, it's going to crush at the box office. And by crush, I mean, like, maybe it'll make $25 million because, you know, theaters are still acting stupid. Um, and people are, in general, are still acting stupid. Like, we went to go see a movie a few weeks ago. We were psyched that the movie theaters were open again. We went to go see Wrath of Man. And granted, it was a Tuesday night, so it's not going to be incredibly busy. But still, it was us and, like, two other couples in the theater. Um, so... But I don't know. You got Hitman's Wife Bodyguard coming out next week, I think, and uh, and then you get Fast and Furious Nine and Black Widow, and uh, I guess we'll see if these movies, um, it, how these movies do. Hitman's Wife Bodyguard, I will be there for that movie. I want, yeah, I cannot fucking wait. It's Ryan Reynolds. How do you go wrong with Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson being able to drop f bombs at every corner? Um, and Free Guy, I think, is coming out soon. But I think that's a PG-13 movie. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll go see it. I, I want to go see it because it's Ryan Reynolds. And it's from the producers of Deadpool. So, it can't be that bad. But, anyways, I, my, my whole point was, why do we need laugh tracks? Like, just do the thing, make the joke, and let me laugh by myself. I don't need a laugh track. That turned me off about... That Kevin James show, The Crew. There's the, like I wanted to watch it. I was psyched when I th- saw that that show was coming out, and then I saw the trailer, and I was like, "Ugh, a laugh track! I don't want to fucking watch that shit." So, <sighs> there. There's that. Um, Fast and Furious movies need to stop. Period. That's from Victor. They are absolute garbage. I will not argue you that uh, argue with you on that, uh, Victor. They are absolute garbage. They can be fun to watch, as far as I'm concerned. Fast and Furious 5, my favorite one. You get The Rock in there playing this badass DHS agent or whatever, DSS agent. And he's got the fucking vest on the whole time. My One of my biggest problems is, like, Fast and Furious 8, that scene where they're all racing around the city. And and really, like, even in, in like, um, Fast and Furious 7, like, they always put these cars... They kind of match. It's like watching Transformers. Only the people are the Transformers because they always put these people in the cars that kind of, sort of match the person. Right? You got Dwayne Johnson in Fast and Furious Eight driving around in this giant up armored uh, truck. Well, what does he look like when he's not in a vehicle? He looks like a fucking giant, right? You got Vin Diesel. He's riding around in this in this souped up muscle car. What does he look like? You get you get you know the 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 you know that dorky. DSS agent who's working with Mr. No One, CIA agent, whatever he is, he, uh, you know, he's driving around in this tiny little Subaru BRZ, you know, it's kind of to make fun of the fact that he's like the little guy, he's the new kid, whatever, you know, then you got Tyrese driving around in a Bentley because Tyrese is flashy, um, you know, 
It's it's they're all ridiculous. Uh, let's see what else. I did like the first one, but it felt so pointless with them going on and on. Yeah, the first one was ridiculous. Uh, we'll never rate that movie on Crash and Taz Movie Seller. <laughs> um, yeah, check out Crash and Taz Movie Seller. They are they are fun to fun to listen to when they talk about movies. Um, but uh, I don't know. They're 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 uh, they're they're like dumb fucking movies that sometimes I can just I don't mind getting lost in if I'm. If I'm, like, scrolling through my video library and I'm like, I want to watch something right now, but I kind of don't want to pay attention to it. It's not something that I want to get drawn in on right now watching. I'll throw on Fast and Furious 6. I think that just a couple weeks ago I watched, um, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I wasted a fucking night because I thought that, you know, because Roe was in Maryland for the weekend and I burned a fucking night because I was like, "Eh, I just want something stupid to watch while I eat dinner for 30 minutes and I put on Fast and Furious 7 ended up watching the whole fucking movie and I was kicking myself at the end because I'm thinking like I wanted to watch a good movie tonight and instead I watched Fast and Furious 7 and not to mention you know the plot holes in all of them um yeah I could go on and on and on about how fucking stupid those movies are um so I don't know the uh but yeah Fast and Furious 9 it's probably going to be the highest grossing film of 2021 and and that's what the people that's what the people wanted to see is that stupid ass movie and it won't get any Oscars it doesn't deserve an Oscar I'll be honest but like Avengers Endgame that music scene in Avengers Endgame when all the all the characters come back everyone you know you know you know Cap is walking along and then you got Sam saying on your left and then fucking Doctor Strange does his orange swirly thing and and the music starts. That guy, whoever the composer was that did the music for that, he should get a fucking Oscar or something. A Golden Globe, I don't know what the fucking, I don't know what the awards are for music, but he should have gotten something for that music scene. You know, and then not not long ago, a month ago or so, you know, the, the um, you know, who, who was it, the, you know, the Chadwick Boseman was up for some sort of Oscar, and instead they gave it to someone else for some other movie. It was an old guy whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, but I don't care. Um, but you know that that felt like that felt more like they might have just been giving it to Chadwick Boseman because he died. You know that you know to me that's my personal opinion. These are all my personal opinions, people. All right, this is just the mad ramblings of fucking crazy guy behind a microphone in a basement um, who thought it'd be cool to start a podcast where he just rants about shit that comes to his head during the week. Um, all right, I think that's going to do it for me. I, I think that I've, I've done my, my required time for, for the week. And, uh, I know I said I was going to try and do two a week and I was successful at that exactly one time so far. Uh, maybe I'll try and knock out another one on Wednesday. I don't know. Maybe we'll see, uh, what happens there. But, um, but as for tonight, I am uh, I, I think I'm done. You can find me Adulting Donnie on Instagram, uh, Adulting with Donnie podcast on Facebook. Um, I got my T-shirts in. You can find you can see well my, one T-shirt anyways. I got my T-shirt in and I got a tank top in for row and uh, you'll be able to see those um, on Instagram. On Instagram, you can see a picture of um, the front and back of the T-shirt that I got myself. And let me know what you think at Adulting Donnie on Instagram. Let me know what you think about that T-shirt because uh, I'm undecided on the back. Uh, the back is kind of busy, has maybe too many words, maybe too much going on back there. I'm not really sure. Um, so second run might look a little different. But uh, I don't know. If I have enough interest, maybe I'll order some and sell them off. I mean, like I said, like I mean, I'll probably just sell them off for cost. Because, uh, you know, I just want to give a, you know, get the, get the word of the podcast out there. So I'm really only interested in that. If, uh, you know, if you want them, I think that they're like $35 a piece. But, but again, if I unbusy the back, that price might drop. Because it's like priced out by letter or something like that. Something crazy. So anyways... Uh, this has been Adulting with Donnie. You can call the suicide prevention line if you need it. It's 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Or you can text the prevention line 741741. And I will check in with you guys next week.